Samsung has been well known for throwing mud at the wall and seeing what sticks when it comes to phones. Foldables being the most recent example, however before then we had the Note Edge, the Galaxy Mega, the Galaxy Round, even the Galaxy Note being absolutely massive back in its day and having a built-in smart stylus. But even during the feature phone days, Samsung wasn't afraid of using brand new technology to gain advantage over their competitors, and today we'll be looking at Samsung's line of OLED feature phones. Now, the first Samsung phone with an OLED main screen was likely the X120 from 2004, however for reasons that will become clear later in the video, I am not able to take a look at that phone. There have also been a few phones with the external screen being OLED, but today we will be looking at Samsung's line of OLED directional button screens. The first phone with such a screen was the E950 from June 2007. That is still really early for OLED technology. If we look at AMOLED specifically, the first ever phone to release with one was the Nokia N85 in October 2008. Samsung didn't release the first AMOLED phone until February 2009 with the i7110. And well, just looking at the spec list, we can see why Samsung took another 1 year and 9 months to perfect the technology. Nokia screen was listed as being able to display 16.7 million colors at QVGA resolution. Samsung? 65,535 colors at a resolution of 128 by 112. In terms of models created with this secondary display, there exists a U900 Saw from February 2008, featuring a very sleek brush metal theme in the OS, and the S7330 from September 2008, which is what I'll be using today. Why this phone specifically? Because I bought it by accident. I saw the bid listing on eBay and the seller wanted basically nothing for it, and it came with the accessories, so I put it in a bid and no one else did, so here we are. The S7330 is a cut down version of the U900 Sol. It doesn't have a nice theme, the camera has less megapixels, there is less storage, but otherwise they're about the same. The U900 and the S7330 have a black background and you can change the colour of the buttons themselves. RGB, 2008 edition. The buttons change depending on the context. On the main screen they are shortcuts to apps, on the menu they are a d-pad, and in the camera they are camera controls like exposure and macro mode. A new gimmicky way to interact with your phone using cutting edge tech that is quintessentially Samsung. Fundamentally, this second display, named Magical Touch, offers no new functionality over any other Samsung slider. But it does look cool, and slider phones hardly ever had a secondary screen, unlike flip phones. So I can imagine this being a cool novelty back in its day, and to be fair, it's still kind of cool today. As to how it is to use, well you may have noticed that the screen is very dim, and that there are weird blotches of colour. Every single U900 and S7330 unit on eBay have the screen partially broken. Early OLEDs suffered massively from degradation, hence early OLED phones being almost impossible to find in a fully functioning condition. But I think it's still a cool story though, a phone with a seemingly 100% failure rate. The only colours I can consistently get are blue and orange. Green is almost completely gone and I'm not able to pick any other colours, like pink still shows up as orange for example. It is crazy to me that after 13 years these magical touch displays are all broken, and likely not even due to high screen on hours, since most likely people only had these phones for a few years before switching to touchscreen phones. These phones just fail over time seeing in people's wardrobes and drawers. Though that being said, this phone seemingly was used until 2019, and during the boot animation we can even see the burning from all the different icons. In terms of usability, the magical touch display is definitely a cool novelty. Like I mentioned already, you are able to change the colour of the buttons and what colour they are when you tap them. There are nice animations when you tap them, and when you go in and out of menus, although the animations are a bit slow. The phone vibrates when you tap the buttons, and even though the vibration more isn't the haptic engine, the vibrations still help massively in making your brain think that you are pressing real buttons. If you are more of an LG fan, don't worry, as typical for LG's phone division, as soon as Samsung would do something, LG would be there with their own competing device. And indeed, LG had created the KF600 which is actually a lot better than what Samsung had created. The concept is still the same, but instead of a square in the middle, where the d-pad would be, the secondary display is a rectangle, being the same length as the main display. In terms of the OS and features, I haven't used a Samsung OS this new, so there are a few improvements from this last Samsung phone that I looked at. The image editor is almost exactly the same, but with a few more features sprinkled in. But there is a brand new video editor, which is shockingly well featured. It has all the tools you'd expect from a video editor, and even though it is annoying to navigate through, you could realistically edit a YouTube video with this phone. Here's what I created. <laughs> Yeah. 
The font also has a theme editor. You can choose up to three colors and the font will pick three different themes with different contrasts. You can also put in your own picture in the background or a pattern. There's also an expert mode that lets you change everything about the theme which is extremely cool. There are also three built-in themes. I really like the main theme, it feels shockingly modern for 2009. Look at all these flat elements. 2009 was peak Skioma for some days, so I applaud Samsung for being ahead of the curve. There is also a purple theme with flowers and a blue theme with bokeh and bubbles. Each theme offers a different clock on the home screen, and you can also choose a living world wallpaper, which is a live wallpaper of the capital city of where you reside. The theme changes depending on the time, and sometimes you'll get random elements like rain or clouds. All these themes use flash animation files. The camera looks about as you'd expect from the time, so I won't dwell on it too much. It has autofocus, which to me was uncommon back in the day, and a flash too. There's also a front-facing camera, but I think it was used for video calls only, because I can't find a way to activate it. Samsung still included a mirror on the back for selfies, so maybe the front-facing camera really was for calling. The phone, of course, came with some games. Here's EA's Tetris. Plays far better than the smartphone Tetris from EA, that's for sure. But, a voice, that's all I have to say about this phone. In the description, I'll leave you guys with more technical aspects of this phone, like what CPU I suspect it's using. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.